You have to love getting a new piece of tech to put on your bike. And today we're incredibly lucky because Bontrager have asked us to have a look at and a ride on their brand new range of Aeolus triple X wheels, which they claim are lighter, more aero and more stable than the previous models. Yeah, and what better place to take them for a ride than in the component wrecking grounds of Flanders in Belgium. The Aeolus range of wheels have been around for a fair while now, launched back in 2011. But Bontrager have now released a complete new range. Three years in the making and a complete redesign as well. Yes, and there are three models in that new range. So we have the Triple X2s, the Triple X4s, and the Triple X6s with a depth of 28 millimeters, 47 and 60 millimeters respectively. All of those models are available in disc brake and rim brake versions, as well as clincher and tubular. And the clincher version are also tubeless compatible. Today, Matt on his Orbea there has got the Triple X6s on, whilst I've got the much shallower Triple X2s on my Trek Emonda. With the redesign, Bontrager have aimed to refine the aerodynamic performance of these wheels over the previous Aeolus range, whilst at the same time making them even lighter. Two key component parts in a top-end wheel set. But the big deal for me is the investment that they've made in making these wheels incredibly stable in crosswind conditions. Bontrager claim that in the tests they've conducted, this new range of wheels fares better than the competition for a similar rim depth in all three of the components that Matt has just talked about. And as Matt also just mentioned, crosswind stability really is a big deal. Doesn't matter how airy your rims are, it's not going to do you much good if you get blown off your bike and you're sat in a gutter on the side of the road. Now, rear wheel rim depth doesn't make too much difference in crosswind stability, hence why you can still use a deep rim or even a disc wheel in a time trial without worrying too much. However, at the front here, where you also find your steering, well, that's a different story. More on that later on. Now, if it's okay with you, Dan, we're gonna start with a closer look at my wheels. Now, I really do love a set of aero wheels, but they can feel a little bit sketchy from time to time in windier conditions. All it needs is a big gust of wind to really knock your confidence. And we've all been there at some time or another. And it's for this precise reason that Bontrager have put such an emphasis on improving the stability of their new range. They sent a bunch of riders out onto the road on windy days and asked them to make a note of exactly when they felt unstable because of a gust of wind. From this, they could extrapolate the precise wind conditions that make riders feel most, well, nervous, and then recreate those conditions for their wind tunnel tests. And they claimed that this new range of wheels, the result of that testing, experienced a significantly lower side force in crosswinds than their main competitors at a similar rim depth. To get here, Bontrager started out by testing an amazing 10,000 different rim shapes using computer software. They then got the best shapes and made multiple models of them and then put them in the wind tunnel, eventually arriving at the optimal shape that provides the best in aerodynamics, strength and stability in crosswinds for each of the three rim depths that you see here today. Now, historically, one of the drawbacks of carbon rims has been their braking performance, especially in wet conditions. Now I for one have quite often been a little bit nervous in the middle of the bunch, in the wet, knowing about the lag between pulling the lever and actually starting to slow down. So Bontrager has spent a lot of time and energy addressing this issue. The braking surface on these is called the laser control track. Basically, they've used a laser to precisely etch a kind of texture on the braking surface, and it's supposed to be a massive step forwards in terms of carbon rim braking performance. That's not really of any concern to me though today, Matt, because I am using disc brakes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm on the shallowest of their new models today, the Triple X2s. They tip the scales at just 1,305 grams for the rim brake version, or 1,380 grams for these. Pretty impressive, 
I think you will agree. And you can take a further 150 grams off those weights if you opt for the tubular version. Despite being so light though, they are reasonably wide as rims. Internal rim width is 21 millimeters. So optimized for today's wider tires of 25 to 28. The minimum that Bontrager recommend you use are 23 mil tires. Although quite frankly, I can't really see why you want to go that narrow these days. Now, since Matt didn't actually talk about the weight of his wheels, I guess I'd better do that for him. Even at 60 millimeter depth, his wheels come in at just 1,530 grams. However, just because mine are far shallower, doesn't mean that they're not aero. Not at all. In fact, Bontrager, in the wind tunnel test that they did, found that this model was just as aero and fast as some of their key competitors' rims that are 50% deeper. And because they are so shallow, it means that crosswinds really aren't a factor at all with these wheels. And also just because they're light doesn't mean that they're not strong enough. These have been designed not just with the road in mind, but also gravel riding if you so wish, or indeed over the cobbles that we've been doing today in Flanders. And also there is no rider weight limit with these wheels either. Let's look a little bit more centrally inside the rim itself. DT Swiss provide the spokes. Now 24 Aerolite spokes at the front and at the rear, although that does go down to 16 at the front when you're on the rim brake version of these wheels. And that is the same spoke count across all three models. And then even more centrally, at the hub, the shells are from Bontrager themselves, but internally that is provided again by DT Swiss. And you just know when you hear that name, it's going to be very reliable. The third set of wheels are the Aeolus Triple X4s. They sit in the middle of the wheels that me and Dan have been riding today, and they say they're their all-round rim, so good on all courses and conditions. Yeah, just like with the Triple X2s, Bontrager's tests have shown that these are aerodynamically on a par with some deeper rims from their competitors. Uh, so you will have the benefit of going just as fast whilst being less nervous in gusty conditions. In fact, there could be a double benefit, couldn't there? Because you could still use these whilst your competitors are reaching for far shallower rims. Hmm. But before we finish, Dan, it is worth mentioning that these rims wheels have been designed and manufactured at Trek HQ in Waterloo, Wisconsin, which is pretty cool. It is, isn't it? Actually, don't finish yet, because we've forgotten something. I've just remembered. What? Uh, a brew? No, the free hub sound test. What's that? When we test the sound of the free hub. Oh, right. I mean, people go mad in the comments if you forget it. We better do it then, don't we, really? Get up okay. the mic here. Are you ready? Let's have a little listen. Mind your fingers. On okay. The is that... That's not really loud, is it? Is that a... I can't really hear over this wind. No, is that a good or a bad thing? I don't actually know. Well, I'm sure our viewers will let us know in the comment section down below. Yeah, they will. Uh, right, well, if you've enjoyed watching this video, you can give us a thumbs up if you would like, just down below. Incidentally, Team Trek Segafredo will be using these wheels in the tubular version at both the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix this year. And incidentally, we have got our preview for the former race there uh, just down here.